In the last lesson, we set up our blank database. Now in this lesson, we're going to build a customer table. Here we are at our database window. And you can see there are three different ways we can create a new table. There is create a table in design view, create a table by using the wizard, or create a table by entering data. If you're using an older version of Access, you may not see these three shortcuts. Instead, you only have the Open, Design, and New buttons. If that's the case, you'll click on the New button to create a table, and you'll be prompted for a method to build a table with. Now, this is actually the way that I prefer to do it. I don't like using these three shortcuts. Call me old-fashioned. So let's go ahead and click on this New button right here. I like working with this new table window that pops up. And here we have a bunch of options for creating a new table. Data sheet view, design view, table wizard, import table, and link table. Now the last two options here are advanced options, and we'll talk about those in a future class. These are for linking to other tables and other databases, and for importing data from other tables and other databases altogether. Again, we'll talk more about these in the future class. Data sheet view is like building a table in Excel. Constructing a spreadsheet, you can just type in information anywhere you want. Data sheet view gives you that functionality in Access, although personally, I don't recommend it. We're going to skip data sheet view for today. There is also a wizard to help you build tables. This is called the table wizard. Now, if you're familiar with tables and other Microsoft applications, you'll know that wizards generally ask you a couple questions and then do something for you. This is generally a good thing. However, in Access, you will find there are good wizards and there are evil wizards. Are you a good witch or a bad witch? Well, in this case, the table wizard is an evil wizard. Why? Because the table wizard will build a table for you, but it's not going to teach you a thing about what it's doing. I'm assuming you're taking this course because you want to learn how to build databases from the ground up. So we're going to skip the table wizard in this class altogether. I don't like the table wizard. We will talk about the table wizard in a future class. The table wizard is sometimes handy if you want to throw together a quick database and just pop, 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 there you go. But the table wizard doesn't teach you what you're doing. So we're going to skip it altogether for today. That brings us to the last remaining option, design view. Design view is the way a table should be built. Design view lets you specify the outline of the table. You specify what fields you want, what kinds of information go into those fields. And then when you're done designing your table, you can fill it with data. So let's pick design view and then click OK. As soon as you click OK, you'll see table 1 colon table pop up. This is a blank table. It doesn't have a name yet. It has no fields, and there's no information in it. It's a piece of clay waiting for us to mold it. Now let's take that list that we made earlier that has all of our tables on it and all of our fields for our different tables in it, and let's start to construct a customer table. So the first field that I would like in my customer table is the first name field. So let's type in first name. Now notice a couple things. First of all, I did not use a space between first and name. I will explain fully why I do this in one of our future classes. When you get into advanced queries or visual basic programming in Access, if you decide to go that far, it's much, much easier to work with field names that do not have spaces in them. So I strongly recommend you don't put any spaces in your field names. This is one of those programmer tips that you pick up after years of doing this. So at this point, just trust me. Don't put any spaces in your field names. You'll thank me later. The second thing to notice 
is that I capitalized first and I capitalized name. Now, you don't have to do that if you don't want to, but I find that capitalizing the words inside of a field name, like first and name, just makes it easier to read. So if you don't want to capitalize it, you don't have to, but again, trust me, later on when you start getting into longer field names, it makes reading them easier.